special envoy. Thank you, you have a few words to say, I believe, first. Indeed. Thank Please. You. And I will, do I will take two or three questions, frankly. Yeah. Really? Two or three? Yeah, yeah three. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the first thing... Um, thank you. Thank you very much. The first thing I would like to say is that uh, uh, I would like, on behalf of the Secretary General and uh, of my own team, uh, to express uh, my own uh, condolences and those of... Um, the United Nations uh, for this uh, horrific attack which took place in Ankara yesterday. Um, it's the first opportunity for me to say so. I did call early this morning, very early this morning, the Turkish ambassador here in Geneva to express uh, our own uh, uh, the sadness about it. Can I? Are you hearing okay, everything? Let me, let me qualify a little bit now the talks and then uh, give you some indications about the information I can give you at this stage. We are at the beginning. So the first one is uh, uh, these talks are important. They are strongly wanted and requested by the ISSG, which is the 18 countries who are part of it, plus two international organizations. They are strongly urged by the US and Russia Federation, the P5s, and the Security Council. So let's be clear. These talks are wanted by the international stakeholders. And today, this afternoon, in our time, our evening, I will be briefing the Security Council. They are urged by the Syrian people. They take place at the time of a fragile, I recognize it, but by and large holding cessation of hostilities, as the Syrian people. And while more besieged areas are being reached than ever before, not enough, not enough, but taking place. And people see that. The public statements are going to be showing, and they're already done, that there is much distance between the sides, and distance indeed exists. And we are going, therefore, to proceed through the technique of proximity talks, as we did previously, and we will this time enhance it. The agenda is set. It is based on 2254, and within the framework, as you know, and the guidance, no question on that, of the Geneva Community. Spoilers will try to upset the talks by incidents, by whatever you will be seeing. And we will be seeing, the secret will be to be called, determined, and have the international community and those I just mentioned keeping that type of capacity. Public rhetoric will try to cast iron preconditions, but this is a moment of truth and hopefully proactive chance. The UN, let's be admitting and accepting what we are, we are going to facilitate. We are facilitating, mediating, pushing, stimulating. But the real peacemakers here are the peacemaking powers who wanted these talks, the ISSG and the Security Council members, and hopefully the Syrian sides. If uh, during these talks and uh, in the next rounds, we will see no notice of any willingness to negotiate, which we hope is not going to be the case. Obviously, we will do what we want to do and we have done. We'll bring the issue back to those who have influence, and that is the Russian Federation, the USA, co-chairs of the ISSG, and to the Security Council. 
the task forces, one on the humanitarian side and one on the cessation of hostilities, are going to be meeting in simultaneous during this week, and next week, and on. We are counting and using to use those task forces in order to contribute to make sure that the talks are focusing on the real issue. And what is the real issue? The mother of all issues, political transition. Therefore, the task forces can be extremely helpful in actually addressing those issues which in a way are potentially a de deflecting for the focus on the focus on the political <coughs> process. The alternative, some people call it plan B, as you know. Well, as far as I know, the only plan B available is return to war and to even worse war than we had so far. Rules of the game. Now we get into technical aspects. Uh, we will be uh, doing a briefing. We are just doing a pre-briefing today. And uh, we will have a briefing every Monday or at the beginning of each week. In other words, the next briefing could be next Monday. It's not casted in iron. You will see we will have to adjust ourselves. But that as a rule, so that you know that every beginning of the week, we will have an opportunity of exchanging a little bit more deeply our own assessment of where we are. And certainly there will be one briefing or meeting together at the end of the first round, which at the time being is expected to be around the 24th of this month. Stakeouts, of course, will take place every time that uh, there is a need. I will probably do some of those directly, especially at the beginning. And otherwise, it would be our two uh, spokespersons, Ahmed Fauzi or, you know, Jesse. Um, in order to be sure that uh, you are protected from past uh, errors that I made in forgetting that uh, the, Geneva, the Geneva team of the press uh, should not be bypassed. And I got a message, and forgive me, but uh, you know, I move uh, quickly and sometimes based on, so on my own uh, connections and people who call me. There will be no exclusive interviews given during this period of the talks, uh, but of course after the talks. And I may decide, of course, uh, depending on the situation, to clarify issues, to clarify issues uh, the, if there is a need. Example, if there is an issue which is coming up uh, and has been stated in one way or the other, my own uh, approach would be then to clarify those and perhaps call for a press conference in that case. Meetings will be announced as soon as possible, but normally not before one hour before they take place, because there will be a lot of changes in uh, the scheduling. The first meeting is today uh, the, with the government, and it will be taking place, in fact, in about 45 minutes, more or less one hour. Yesterday, yesterday, my first meeting was with whom? Let's see, can we do a little bit of testing? Which, which was my first meeting yesterday? Please reply. Any one of you? Can I once in a while interview you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, can anyone say with whom I, did I have the first meeting? Somebody, somebody said opposition. Beg your pardon? Um, anyone else? That's a wrong answer, but <clears throat> never mind. <laughs> I forgive you. A I good try, you. though. Yeah. Madam? No, and I'm a little bit disappointed, but um, anyway, the first meeting, not by accident, at uh, uh, yesterday afternoon, actually uh, took place with Syrian women. And it's not by accident. I met uh, the Syrian Women's Advisory Board, had a long meeting with them, almost an hour and a half. 
They are uh, those who I hope will be able to contribute more than ever before to at least our understanding on how to address the Syrian crisis. Then I met uh, as a courtesy call in a short call meeting, because the real meeting starts today, the government. And then later on I met the HNC. Again, relatively short meeting in their own hotels as a matter of courtesy. The next meetings are going to be more structured. The rule of the game will be inclusiveness. So we will find, thanks to the proximity approach and to the rule that have been given by the Security Council, to uh, include as many as possible either this round or next round. In fact, the list of those that we are going to consult or meet or will be part of eventually, I hope, not only proximity negotiations but in fact direct negotiations, is going to be constantly updated because the message is, to me, that should be all inclusive and the Syrians should be, all Syrians should be given a chance. Um, can I now uh, make one additional point, if I may? One is an anecdote which leads me back to what was my first meeting, and the second one is that uh, um, while we are talking, I hope you will uh, bear in mind that somewhere else, I think in Amman, there, will, there is, at the very time we are raising the issue, the uh, presentation of the report of UNICEF on the situation of Syrian children. It does have an impact on us. It is a reminder to us that these talks can not only be about procedure or posturing, but need to address the issue of uh, Syrian future, and that at any cost we have to try to maintain and increase the impact of the cessation of hostilities, which is making a difference, but not enough, and of the humanitarian access, which is making a difference, but not to all uh, uh, the areas besieged and beyond. So let me remind you, but you will see it from the report, to me, they had an impact. 3.7 million children under five. What does it mean? Have they seen anything beyond the war? Have they seen anything that looks uh, a normal life? 3.7 million children have only seen war in Syria. Seven million of them live in families which are on the level of pre-poverty. 900 of them, almost 1,000, were killed last year, and 150 of them while they were sitting in their own schools. Just to tell you, Mm? What is the message is telling us? When you link it to the 15th, which is Wednesday, and I know you are aware of it, that means uh, five years anniversary, sad anniversary. Last point, a little bit of an anecdote, if you allow me, which actually was reported to me yesterday by uh, the one of the Syrian women of the Syrian Advisory Board, she was, uh, had been visiting uh, Syrian women in the Beka Valley in Lebanon and had seen some other women in, uh, both in Turkey and uh, in uh, Jordan. And one of them said to her, and I think it was quite an impactful, and said, I'm living in a tent here. I'm living in a tent with my family. But if the ceasefire holds, if the humanitarian aid continues moving, and if we have a feeling that this is going to produce peace in Syria, you know what? I'll take this tent, and you know, I will bring it back to where my house was, which is just ruins, and put my tent there, because I want my own dignity, and I love my country. I think that message is what, at least to me, with I believe with my colleagues pushing ahead, not simply because this is a job, like you too, is quite a stimulation for making sure that these talks, which start distant, should become effective. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Special Envoy. I, I will give the floor first in recognition of the tragedy in Turkey to our Turkish uh, correspondent, Betul. Please.
Bey Tülürük, Turkish News Agency. Uh, Mr. Demistura, I was wondering what your comments would be on the, uh, the Syrian foreign minister dismissed uh, the uh, discussion of the presidential elections within 18 months in Syria. I was wondering what would you say about it. Thank you. It is my habit not to add a comment on the statements made by any foreign minister or any of the stakeholders, and I've practiced that so far. I made a statement. I feel that that statement is consistent with the um, 2254, but uh, I have no more comments to make. Thank Ahmed you. Chow, please go ahead. Machauki from the Geneva Press Corps. Good. M Mr. Demistura, as you mentioned just minutes ago about the Security Council resolution and the Geneva communique, when you will deal officially starting from today with this question of governance or gov government of unity, there are big differences between Geneva communique and, and the Security Council resolution how you will deal with these differences, especially that we see the demands of the two parties are completely different when they talk about this item. Thank you. Well, first of all, just to refer again back to Madame, and again, please uh, convey our condolences, because it was really terrible and happening just before. Um, sorry. Um, do I? Answer, yeah. Um, my, my line on uh, um, future of uh, Syria is the one which the Secretary General has been maintaining. It is up, frankly, to the Syrian people to vote, elect, decide. But we need to help them. And one way to help them through the international community is having these uh, three points of 2254. At the end of the day, it will be up to them to decide uh, how to run their own country. Regarding the points that you just mentioned, Please, the, that's the, I think we will have a private uh, training on how negotiations take place afterwards. Eh? Because you are asking me to reveal the techniques and the approaches that we may be using in order to gap a, a, cover a gap or bridge a gap that is obviously there. But that's why we are negotiations. I turn to Mohammed from Al Jazeera, please go ahead. Mohammed Krishan from Al Jazeera. Okay, you've been listening to Stefan de Mistura, the UN Special Envoy to Syria in Geneva, talking about those proximity talks. He called this the mother of all issues, the political transition. He said the only plan B is a return to war, a war worse than what we have had so far. John Brain is listening in and has been listening in to what Stefan de Mistura has been saying, the Special Envoy for Syria. John, what have you made so far as those proximity talks begin? What have you made so far uh, as to what Stefan de Mistura has said? Well, he clearly feels that it is the only option, uh, these talks, that there is no alternative, as you say, plan B, a return to war, and a w war worse than uh, we've seen before. Uh, and he's made it very clear that people should ignore the rhetoric from the various sides. There's going to be a great deal of that. Uh, we've already heard it in the lead-up to uh, this morning, uh, both sides uh, saying what their red lines are. I think he's really making the point that uh, whatever they say in public, uh, may have to be challenged in private uh, and so we shouldn't read too much into public statements because the nitty-gritty will be in the meeting rooms when he uh, talks to the various sides in turn and uh, they try and come towards some sort of agreement uh, but uh, clearly the stakes are very high he spoke of the number of children who are in Syria under five who've never known anything other than war they've never known a normal life more and more of them are being plunged into poverty many have died some he said while sitting in their classrooms and he's made it clear that there won't really be a running commentary as the days progress on how the talks are going. Uh, we'll have to wait till at the end on the 24th of March to get a real idea of how, what progress they've ma made, unless, of course, things go wrong and they do collapse. But he does seem hopeful, particularly with the cessation of hostilities in place. Uh, he mentioned the task force, which will be monitoring that, so that will be taken out of the equation of the talks themselves. And the idea is that the protagonists will just concentrate 
on the main issues. Those issues, of course, are a transitional government, a new constitution for Syria, and within 18 months, fresh elections. OK, John, let's leave it at that for the moment. John Brain, live from Geneva, thanks ever so much for that update.